This video is sponsored by Unity. Currently on the Unity Asset Store, there is a mega bundle sale where you can save up to 90% on some great hand-picked assets. If you're at all interested, please check it out using the link in the description below or in the comments. And if you actually decide to make any purchases, that'll help in supporting the channel too. Now let's get to the video. Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In today's video, I'll be starting a new kind of video called Unity C Sharp Bite Size. I'll be giving each video a topic to do with programming, but more specifically for Unity. So I won't be covering, you know, what a class is, what a variable is, but more Unity specific things. Today's video is going to be about callbacks in Unity. These videos won't necessarily be beginner focused, but they also won't necessarily be advanced focused. It really depends on the programming topic, whether we're talking about callbacks like today's video, or whether we're talking about interfaces and abstraction. I'll be assuming for each video that you have the pre-existing knowledge ready to follow along. If you don't, then let me know down below what it is you don't quite understand. And if it's something to do with basic C sharp, beginner stuff, then obviously I'd recommend going to learn that somewhere on a course. Otherwise, if it's actually Unity specific, then obviously I can make a video on that too. I hope you're looking forward to it. Let's get started. Okay, so this video will be split up into two steps. Step one, I'll simply be explaining what callbacks are and showing you the Unity documentation page about them. And then for step two, I've prepared a code example where I'll be showing you the most commonly used Unity callbacks and explaining when to use them and how to use them. Let's get started. If you want access to this project, you can go over to GitHub and download it. It's completely free. Links in the description below. Okay, so step one, what is a callback? Well, first of all, I'm going to be linking this down below so you can follow along, you can read this page. I quite often revisit it if I ever forget the order of events because there are a lot of different callbacks. Now, I'm not covering every single one you see here. I'll be covering quite a few of them, the ones that you use all the time. So when I refer to a callback, I really just mean a function, but it's some specific functions built into Unity. Because you're using Unity, and that's a game engine that handles some of the stuff for you behind the scenes. It handles a lot, actually. And one of the things is, when you make an application, you know, for example, if you made a C-sharp basic, you know, template in a console app, you'll have a method called main, and that's the entry point of your application. That is the uh, function that's called first to get everything going. Because any function that you look at in your code must have been called by another function, and that must have been called by another function. And you follow it all the way back, and you get to the entry point, okay? You have to to start somewhere and basically callbacks are methods that unity call for you in the game engine that you can effectively use to run your own game logic because if it wasn't for those then nothing would ever happen you know you wouldn't be able to call your methods because you'd have to go delving into the source code and call it yourself but that's why it's there already that's why these callbacks exist so this page is really useful because Unity have grouped the different callbacks into different categories. So we have initialization, used for initializing your script. Maybe you have to set a value, maybe you know when the player exists, you set the health to max health or something like that. So that's done in either on awake, on enable, start. Okay, depends on the scenario. And basically those are all for initializing things. We don't need to worry about reset. I'm not covering that in this video. Then we have fixed update. Okay, this is to do with physics. All of these different things are to do with physics. Fixed update is the one I'm going to be covering in this video. We don't really need any of the others for today. Then down in game logic, we have update. We're definitely going to be using that because update is used a lot. Okay, now I could do a, I will be doing, sorry, a separate video on coroutines, which will be all about this yield return, wait for seconds, yield null. You know, you might have heard about this before. Uh, that'll be its own video, not today. Now we don't really care about scene rendering, gizmo rendering, GUI rendering, uh, end of frame, this yield return, wait end of frame this is for coroutines and i'll be covering that in a separate video as i mentioned earlier then on application pause we don't really care about that that's useful when you press the pause button in the editor now i don't know if it's called at any other point but you know it's not important for us really on application quit is used for when for example you stop pressing play or you build the game and you've closed it i'm also not going to be covering that today's video i've never found a use for it really though i'm sure there are uses for it but we'll definitely be covering on disable and on destroy. These are used quite frequently. On disable is used quite a bit more than on destroy in my experience. But yeah, basically these are methods that get called by Unity that we can write our own logic in to do what we want. Now I'll go into the code example. So over in Unity, I have a player and some walls. Now in this scene, it's just there to look nice in the background if I'm being completely honest, but we do need a script in the scene to exist to get callbacks. So on this player object, I've got my callback example script, okay? Let's open that up in Visual Studio. So what I've done is I've actually used all the different callbacks that I'm going to be covering in today's video. I've made the functions for them and I'm going to debug.log them to show you in the console when they get called so we can see everything are working. Now in an actual game, don't debug.log all these different callbacks. It's purely for this tutorial to show what's happening, okay? I did a video a few days back, maybe a week ago, and that was talking about why not to use debug.log. But for a tutorial, it's actually very useful for showing output to you guys. So we're going to start with awake and a useful thing to remember is that if you mouse over one of these callbacks that Unity have made, there's actually a little descriptive box here saying 
awake is called when the script instance is being loaded, okay? Now, if you remember from that um, list I showed you earlier, awake, start, and on enable, these three, uh, are all used to initialize, but they're used for different situations. The main thing to know is that awake and start are only ever called once for a given script, okay? These are used to initialize things, to do things once. Whereas on enable is called every single time the script turns on. So you can turn the script off by disabling it, and you can re-enable it and this gets called again. But remember, start and awake only get called once when the script starts. So awake is used to initialize things where it must happen before the initialization of another script. Now what I mean by that is, you might have two scripts in your scene and one of them needs to be set up before the other. If you put both of the logic in start, then you're not guaranteeing that one will be called before the other and you might get problems. Equally, if you put them both in awake, you might still get problems because just because they're in awake and they get called at start doesn't mean one will get called before the other or the other way around. It's, it's effectively random. So if you definitely need something to happen first at the start, then you put that in awake and the thing you need to happen second, you put in start. And then on enable is mainly used to subscribe to events. So you might have an event, for example, let's say um, you've got some UI, okay? UI is the main place that I use on enable and on disable to subscribe and unsubscribe from events. The reason being UI only needs to care about things updating when they update, okay? And for example, if the UI is disabled, we don't actually care about what happens. For example, if the player's health UI is turned off, why do we care about the player's health changing? But obviously when we re-enable it, we start caring again. So on enable is when we subscribe, and then further down here I've got on disable is when we unsubscribe. So the next two are the updates, the fixed update and the regular update. Okay, I'll cover this first. You're probably more used to using regular update. It's simply used to call things every single frame. So for example, if you need to update something every frame, check something every frame, you do it in update. So I don't know, for example, you're checking the distance to an enemy or the enemy's checking a distance to a player to aggro on it or something. You want to check every frame. How far away is it? How far away is it? How far away is it? Or you could use colliders, but that's obviously just a different approach to the problem. But if you are doing, for example, distance checking, you want to do it in update. So this gets called every frame, okay, based on your frame rate. And that's an important thing. You never miss a frame. This will definitely be called every frame. If you've got a lower frame rate, it'll be called less, but you're still never going to miss a frame. So if you have input, for example, using the old way, which is doing if they press the button then do this, rather than using a new input system, then you'd want to do that in update because even if you're lagging, you're never going to miss a frame because when you press the button, it has to be on a frame. Otherwise, you know, it doesn't make sense. Fixed update doesn't necessarily happen every frame. So if you did input checking in there, you might miss a frame, you press the button and nothing happens because it didn't get called. Um, so fixed update is used for doing physics because it's synced with the physics engine. The physics engine doesn't necessarily get called the same amount as the normal game loop. Reason being mainly performance. So what you need to do is you need to make sure that applying force is in sync with the physics engine. And a problem that people normally have with the fixed update is that it doesn't get called every frame, which is why you need to do certain logic in update, certain logic in fixed update. So I guess the best way to explain this fixed update real quick is to head over to the actual engine, open up uh, edit project settings, and you notice you've got a fixed time step value. This is how long between each fixed update call. Now. This is a, as it says here, frame rate independent interval. So if your frame rate is really fast, then what happens is we actually skip calling fixed update on certain frames because it means it would be going too fast. And if we're lagging, then it means that when we next actually hit a frame, it'll say how long since the last frame? Oh, that took quite a while. Okay, we'll call fixed update multiple times. So it basically is in sync with the physics engine. The physics engine uh, doesn't tick as fast as the normal game loop. I think it's because of uh, performance issues, but someone can correct me if I'm wrong there. Um, that's why we have this fixed update and you can tweak the actual value if you do want here. But that's the point based on, oh, sorry, regardless of frame rate, it will always be called the same amount of times uh, over time, right? It'll be very consistent. So as I said, if you miss frames, it'll call it more. And if you get a very good frame rate, it will actually call it less to balance out. And then we actually have late update. So just like update, it's called every frame. It's called just as frequently, but it's called afterward, okay? So this is called at the start of, I guess you'd call the update loop. And this is called at the end of the update loop. And the reason you have this, as I've put here, so it's used to run logic every frame, but it has to happen after all the other update calls. So for example, in your update method, you might move a player. And in late update, you'll move the camera because the camera, of course, needs to follow the player. So you need to make sure the player has finished moving before you move the camera. Because let's imagine you don't do that and the camera moves to the player, but it's it's already in the same place, so it's there. And then the player moves. So every frame, the camera will be behind by a frame. Now that might not sound like it's gonna be noticeable, but I've actually had situations where it definitely is noticeable. So I'd highly recommend you doing anything where you're following other things, like camera-wise, you know, it needs to update position based on something else. Do it in the late update as opposed to the update. 
And then finally, the two cleanup methods, we've got on disable and on destroy. So on disable, just like on enable, is called when the object is turned off rather than turned on. And it's called every time the object is turned off. So it's used for unsubscribing to events. If you've got some UI, you turn on, you show it, you subscribe to events, you've got some UI, you turn it off, you unsubscribe. Okay, so you don't care anymore about those events. And that's how you do it in here in on disable. And then finally on destroy. So this is also used for cleaning up things. You technically can unsubscribe from events here, but obviously remember for every time you subscribe to an event, you've got to have some code to disable it. And you don't want to, for example, subscribe twice for every time you disable once because then otherwise you'll have loads of, you know, subscribed events multiple times. Imagine if you're listening to input and on enable you subscribe and on destroy you unsubscribe then what can happen is you can toggle the object on and off, on and off, on and off, and it'll actually be subscribed multiple times. So maybe every time you click it calls shoot three times rather than once and you get problems like that. So make sure uh, on destroy is like the mirror of start or the mirror of on awake. There's not really like um, another destroy that happens before or after the other destroy that doesn't exist. Um, just make sure to not get these two confused on disable and on destroy, okay? So if we press play in Unity, you'll notice how we start off by getting awake, then on enable, then start. These are all called once, okay, in that order, which is the same order from the website I showed you earlier. Then fixed update is called every physics frame, every fixed update frame, and that's less frequent than the actual update loop and the late update, which have been called the same amount, okay, th this number will always be the same. If we uncollapse, you'll notice how we get update, late update, update, late update, and then in there we'll have a mixed in fixed update. We'll press collapse to make it easier to see. We'll go to the inspector and disable the player object, which has the script on it, which is the same as disabling the script effectively. We get on disables called. And when we disable it, all the update ticks stop happening, okay? Just remember that. They all stop when the object is disabled. And then if we re-enable it, okay, these start ticking again, and we actually get on enable called. Now, I don't know why it's not actually collapsed with this one, but it doesn't matter. The point is it's called again. Now, just to show you that it works, if we keep the object enabled but disable the actual mono behavior, the component, then it's the same thing that happens. These all stop happening and on disable is called for a second time. And then finally, let's re-enable it. So we see everything working again. On enable was called again. And then now if we destroy the game object, so I'm gonna go to it and press delete, look in the console, and we had on destroy was called once. So this is the entire lifetime of the object, all the callbacks working as they should be, and I've explained when they should be used and how to use them. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. It would help a lot. Let me know down below what you want to see next and if you're liking the idea of this series. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching and goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. A special thanks to John Salig, Liz Kimber, David McDermott, Exit Return Zero, Josh Folsom, Beard or Die, Dustin Miller, Francisco Diaz, Rack, Yoris Letter, Hades Zorko, Rene, Buddha Ray, and Memory Baldwin. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord, as well as our website. If you could help us out by following on any of those, checking any of those out, that would be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.